He lost in the tournament and has really rallied through the modern rounds to stay alive here. Yeah, he won his play to play to stay rounds and is just kind of cut through all of Lotus Box in order to make it to this stage of competition. Turn one noble hierarch from Zan. And it's really true here. Lotus Box, five players into day two. Now Edgar Magiesha has already made the top four, but with Zan and Dylan left, so far they've gotten very close, but no one else has punched a ticket yet. Right, and a lot of that is just because of what this banned Snowblade deck has been able to do to these devoted devastation archetypes. So on the play, Zan, a big mana setting up a significant mana advantage and we see giver of runes and vizier of remedies for zan and this should put some pressure immediately on zach allen right so it is a little bit of damage but syed with this more linear take on the devoted druid combo is going to struggle to win a fair game whenever things like batter skull and oko start getting involved so what do you make of this with vizier starting out typically you see in this situation a uh, player like zan would lead on the devoted druid hat side Right, so I would assume that there's just not a Devoted Druid in Syed's hand, and he kept a hand on the back of it having Giver of Runes, of it having Noble Hierarch, so that ex layer of acceleration, and just having enough good cards to justify it being better than, say, a six-card hand. See, the, fast, the start there was fast enough that Zach had to make the turn one path to exile. Takes care of a zero of... Or the Giver of Runes. However, at this point, Zan's going to have five mana to two on his next turn. <laughs> it does not feel good, but honestly, if you let the Giver of Runes untap, things get worse for you. Right, at that point, I mean, the path's no longer a card anymore. Exactly, and Alan's planning to win a long game anyway, so when you know there isn't any single spell that can come down and wreck you, you generally assume you'll be okay. I love this from Zan. It's swing for three with... Vizier, he goes for Shalai, but Zach is at the ready with Mana Leak. So Zach down to 14. It was three off the fetch shock, and now a missed land drop for Zach Allen. <sighs> That's going to be a big deal for this when you're taking damage from this Vizier of Remedies. And one of your lands is a Horizon Canopy. Right. Now Zan needs to be a bit careful here. Ice Fang Coatl is a card that exists. That's true. So he may not want to attack into this board. At well, the same time... Well, there are time, no other snow permanents. It doesn't have Death Touch. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> just a card. blocker. I think that's fine now. Oh, oh, it is a very, very fancy Elvish Visionary. Just flash flying and sometimes Death Touch. Oh, uh, well... I mean, when you add a blue mana it, to it, you should get nothing less. Doesn't, doesn't really look like it ever has Death Touch to me. Not in this game deck. One thing about Bant Snowblade, much like its Stoneblade decks in Legacy, it can operate very mana light. It has cards like three main deck Force of Negation, uh, Arkham's Astrolabes, Path to Exiles. It can hang out here for a while. Right, there is just a ton of card advantage in this deck. Everything just sort of has value stapled to it. For Zan, second Noble Hierarch. Double Exalted, four damage in, Zack to ten. This will actually kill Zack very quickly if he doesn't do something to catch up on the battlefield. Make that, and actually, Zan passing the turn. No other plays. Zach's got to be happy with that. Ooh. Except no more lands. He draws oh, Oko. No. And step Eladomri's call. Zan going in for the kill here. It's two missed land drops for Zach Allen. And at this point, we might end up seeing something like Ranger Captain of Eos just going full value plays, trying to turn off any of the planeswalkers that Allen could have to get back into this game. And casting this Eladomri's Call on Zack's end step means that Zack can't even do something like Force of Negation since it's his turn. We see Eladomri's Call for Duskwatch Recruiter. This is often a combo piece in the deck, but with the mana advantage Zan has, he may just be planning to play this fairly. Yeah, you just cast it as a spell, then get to draw a card more than likely, right. and then transform it and push for lethal the following turn four more damage zach down to five here's duskwatch recruiter it resolves there are no sweepers in zach's list zan gets to play straightforward here path to exile from zach okay and psst, let's look at the basics count for zan there are no more basics so this actually just takes care of it strong in response Love the free removal spell yeah in response though zan finds another creature it's vizier of remedies <sighs> But it does mean that five mana of Zan's traded with one of Zach's. That's true, but when you're this far behind, it's not right. necessarily about mana exchanges. It's about surviving. Uh, Zach still misses the land again. He found another path to exile, so that 
that plays. Sure, absolutely. The big issue is that these noble hierarchs are going to end up being worth damage. Right. Alan is low enough at this point that it, this isn't a means to an end. He needs to actually just do something that contributes to the battlefield. Yeah. He's treading water. It buys him a turn, which is great, but it doesn't do anything more than that. Exactly. Buying a turn is better than the alternative, but only by a little bit. Yeah, we see the path to exile to number three for Zach. And normally, if this is the kind of matchup where he resolves three paths to exiles, he should be pretty happy about it. Right, but what did those three paths come at the cost of? And we see five mana from Zan. Finale of Devastation. If there's a force of negation in Zach's hand, that certainly is going to get it. And he has it. So, keeping pace here. Be this might be the second yeah. of breathing room that Zach needs. This could be the the time he gets to turn around if he finds a land right now. Zan passes, right? Zach managed a zero and one mana card there. He double spelled with only two lands. And no. it's a miss. It's a miss. <sighs> it's Ice Fang Coatl. It He plays it main base. It blocks. Yep, and he's hoping that it can draw him into that land. Okay. And there he goes. Okay. All right, Zach this has a plan. This is how it happens. But... We have down to four. Remember, Zach has to keep tapping that horizon canopy. Ooh. That for the quadal. Yeah, he went down to four. And that matters. These are point these are chunks of it two damage up. off the noble Irox. That was a turn. To Zan we go. He's just trying to find a way to get four more damage across. Crawl across that finish line. Yeah, and I think in a more general sense, we see how this is a tough matchup for Devoted Devastation. Jan's deck's doing its thing, and Zach is surprisingly able to keep pace. Yeah, it feels like this shouldn't be close, but it feels like it is. Yeah, we see a hard cast once upon a time from Zan. Finds Giver of Runes. That's just fine. It's a creature. Uh, that's something that gives evasion. Yeah, I mean, that is that is a good card here. On Zan's side, he can swing in with a Hierarch. That's worth two damage. Just needs to find some more damage. This is an attack for two. Is Zach going to take? Or is he... A t it's a two, three. You feel like Zach has to block here. <sighs> this is tough. And the thought may be something <sighs> like... Maybe a, an Arkham's Astrolabe into a Snowland turns on Death okay. Touch, and that's the way you actually win this game? Giver of Runes and Vizier of Remedies and a land for Zanny passes Zach's at two. Interestingly enough, Zan still only has one lethal attacker because of how Exalted works. Back to Zach Allen. Well, he might only have one lethal attacker, but attacking with Giver of Runes and Vizier of Remedies next turn turns off Horizon Canopy. Land for Zach, but it's a fetch land. He just can't use that. Ooh. Maybe down the road, if he stabilizes and gains life, he'll find a way, but that's not a card. There is so much that Alan needs here. And Zan's last card is Deputy of Detention. That gets a blocker out of the way without even having to tap does. this giver of runes. Is Zan going to fire off the deputy here to go for the win? Casts once upon a time. That's free. Five cards. Maybe all lands. Looks like he finds a giver of runes and another vizier, so he'll take the giver of runes. And this is exactly what you talk about with Zan being on the play here, is he was able to apply pressure and capitalize on the fact that Zach was missing land yeah. drops. It is a bad matchup, for sure. Correct. But Zan on the play, I mean, he this needs something to break his way. It's not a 0% so, matchup, so, right? Right. So the tactics here feels like Giver of Runes should target Noble Hierarch. Something like that. If it works then you attack with the Hierarch. If it doesn't work and he removes the Hierarch in response, then you attack with Vizier. Sure, sure. The big issue is the thing if you target the Noble Hierarch, you can't give it protection from Path and Ice Fang Coatl. That's true, but three Paths are in the graveyard. Correct. And Deputy of Detention does it. Zan Sayed takes game one. It's a difficult matchup. We mentioned that this was the key game he needed to contest this match, and now he is up at 1-0. Right. This is the matchup or this is the game where things are the best for Syed, which is to say they're the least bad in this game. From here, he's going to need to steal one, but things feel a bit closer when he's on the play, and Alan hasn't had the chance to reconfigure his deck to be a sort of anti-creature deck. So, Zan Syed takes the first game off Zach Allen. It is the only second game Zach has lost to this deck all tournament. Right. Otherwise, he's just 
kind of <laughs> been walking across it as the stairway to this phase of the tournament. So we look at the sideboard. We've seen how Zach has boarded here. We know that On Thin Ice has come in in this matchup. We know that he's going to use Sword of Fire and Ice, his best equipment in the matchup. We know that Supreme Verdict is going to come in. Correct. Now, there are some things that Zach has been going back and forth on. One of the things to talk about is some of the, is the equipment package. Right. So Sword of Fire and Ice and Sword of Feast and Famine is a sort of point of contention where they both have play at different phases of the game and for different reasons. Because Sword of Feast and Famine actually gives you more evasion through all of the green creatures in the deck, even right. if the trigger that it gives you is a bit less impactful. Uh I, we were talking with Harlan Fear earlier, and he brought up that it was also possible that you cut Batter Skull instead of either of your swords and just give a Stoneforge Mystic the sword. Right. The question is whether Batter Skull or Sword of Feast and Famine sh should be your second equipment. Correct. Yeah, I think Sword of Fire and Ice, definitely in, and it improves Zach in the matchup. Yes, absolutely. On the other side, on Zan's part of the board... I don't know that there's too much in this matchup I like for him. No, he really is kind of leaned more towards being able to beat up on things like Death Shadow with Mirroring Crusader for the anti-grindy cards or the anti-removal cards in his sideboard. You could make a case for something like Veil of Summer, but that right. card doesn't even play very well against Spell Queller. But some of the creature removal in the sideboard does. Things like Path to Exile and Dismember. We might end up seeing some of those come in if Syed wants to posture away from the combo a little bit. Yeah, but this is where things get hard. And I think in both these sideboarder games, Xan is a underdog. Oh, absolutely. It is very yeah. much a spot where Syed needs things to break his way in order to get to the top four. That said... He has two chances at it. Yeah, absolutely. So, and one of them, he's chance. going to get to be on the play. So he'll get the chance to recreate what happened in game one during the third game. So, sideboarding here, we'll see how that game two is going to go. Now, if you're watching us here at Star City Games, make sure you check out Star City Games Premium. You can be a premium member on our website, which means you get instant access to exclusive content, ads free here, and a 5% discount on Star SCG purchases. You can sign up. It's a monthly program at starcitygames.com slash premium. Zan looking to join teammate Edgar Magayesh in the top four. Right, and that's a spot where with Syed being the captain of Team Lotus Box, making it and being half the top four with one of your teammates has got yeah. to just be living the dream. Yeah, the Lotus Box th has been the breakout team on the tour this year, and they look to, they're like they're going to put one to three players in the top four. Right. This is just, they've really had a dominant performance the last couple of weeks, and this would be the perfect cap to that. He's one game away. On Zach Allen's side, Zach Allen, pretty under the radar for a lot of this season. Good, cons very consistent with his results. Had some good classic finishes, a couple open finishes. Coming into the Players' Championship, middle of the pack, really. Right, he was one of the at-large finishers to actually get into the Players' Championship. And what that says in a lot of cases is that he might not have had any absurd enough seasons to get in as a one of those top three at-large spots, but... He said a very consistent yeah. year. And honestly, this tournament, this the tournament this weekend, the Players Championship has gone the exact same way for Zach. He won, you know, won a pod in the one of his pods on day one, lost a pod in day one, finished middle of the pack, lost the first round, went to the lower bracket, won some games in the lower bracket. He's just kind of been sticking around in the middle of the pack all tournament. Right, and that's just to speak to him having a fantastic mental game. Yeah, those kind of swings can be very challenging it's because especially because of how the tournament is that means he has played more matches than almost any other player exactly it's just been an unbelievable grind for him to reach this and you know it's still holding up he we saw that last game he was playing it out to the bitter end there was a spell queller in his hand there and it was possible for him to end up getting back into a game that it felt like he was what five percent to right. win tops so game two now zach allen is down this should be a game where he is advantaged. He's on the play post-board. 
But as we saw last game on game one, sometimes things can go wrong and don't break his way, and Zan is just waiting to capitalize on another one of those. Looks like Zan will take a mull again, though. And to be fair, Path to Exile, Zach had three of them last game. It is the kind of tool you want against Devoted Devastation. Now that the deck doesn't have cards like Collected Company to two for one its way back in, three spot removal spells often does it in. Yeah, it, there's a point where you even just get to attack the cards that matter because rather than being a value creature deck, this is just a synergy deck now. There are enablers and there are payoff cards. And yeah. if you just leave Syed with, say, a Vizier of Remedies and some mana creatures and answer everything else, they're not doing anything that can beat, say, a Sword of Fire and Ice. Right. In the past, the value plan under Devoted Devastation would be Kitchen Finks and Collected Companies. Nowadays, it is for Oko. That yep. is the only non-game plan cards, and apparently Oko is just more value than a Collected Company engine. Exactly. Oko is the kind of card where maybe it ends up winning. It's so strong you need to play it. It also is a way that you can interact with those swords while being proactive, but... It's not something that's going to win an entire game by itself when it feels like, in a lot of ways, this banned Snowblade deck was trying to sort of gun for Oko. Six card hand for Xan. He's actually thinking about it. Looks like it will be a keep with one to the bottom. Nah, going to do it. Ready to go for game two. Bant Snowblade, actually a relatively new deck here in Modern. I mean, it feels like a very old deck because it plays so much like Legacy Stoneblade used to. I mean, to. it basically is just the Legacy Stoneblade deck, right? So you have the Esper one, rather. Right. Than you just have Baleful Strix, well, let's say Lore Scale, or not Lore Scale, Quaddle. Excuse me, Ice Fang Quaddle. Then Stoneforge Mystic, Jace the Mind Sculptor, a lot of things that we've seen for years, but now it's all modern legal. Right, Force of Negation, very close to being Force of Will. Exactly. Swords to Plowshares. Yeah, Path to Exile. We kind of have the modern equivalents of Legacy Staples. Mm -hmm. Once Upon a Time for Xan finds Horizon Canopy. And he'll start with Giver of Runes. Zach's fine with that. I do like the pressure that Giver of Runes brings in. Zach either has to give Zan an extra land immediately or risks Zan's creatures being unanswerable. Right. And this is just sort of one of the layers of protection that this Devoted Devastation deck presents. It says, all right, here's a must-answer card. Here's a must-answer card. Here's a must-answer card. Remember, unlike Mother Runes, Giver of Runes cannot target itself. In return, it gets a second point of toughness. Also can give protection from colorless. Second land from Zach. Three, all three colors now set up. Post board, Zach does have a sweeper now in the list. One copy of Supreme Verdict. There are a lot of cards that feel like sweepers. We see that Detention Sphere hiding out in Alan's right. hand. There's, it's not hard to imagine a situation where that hits two or three of the same mana creature. Zan will shock down to 18. Goes for Devoted Druid. Does Zach have mana leak? He does, and will counter. Nothing to protect. Giver of Runes will attack in. Both players now to 18. Hey, Syed knows this is his avenue to victory. Is just applying any level of pressure that he can. See, you mentioned that detention's here, whether Zach wants to fire it off here. Also, something like Oko or Teferi be a fine play. Will be the Time Raveler. And he'll have Zan pick up that one drop. And this is the texture we've seen in games up to this point. You see both Devoted Druid and Giver Runes in Zan's hand. Zach, however, will be ready with a Detention Sphere to answer this. Most of his deck capable of being removal when he needs it to be.
the back of that we go. Detention sphere in hand. He will plus. Step one. Yeah, looks like he has a sword. Mana leak, detention sphere, birds of paradise. Good tools here. Needs to, I mean, it feels like detention sphere has to happen this turn. Is that right? It's possible. It feels like he just has other forms of removal and wants to save detention sphere for something like Oko if he can. Looks like he has an Oko of his own. That one functions as removal too. He's trying to stop the combo, so he will elk the devoted druid. Three, three. Oko will then in next turn be able to take care of the giver runes as well. Mm, and here we see him miss a land drop. That might punish. That's why he was thinking so hard. It's just a detention sphere is yeah. kind of underwhelming a lot of the time. Yeah, the thing I like about Zack's side is that he can afford to kind of have these bad exchanges because there isn't that much of a concern that Zan is going to win a fair game. He's just so far behind in that matchup. Correct. Noble Hierarch from Zan. The Elk took down the Teferi, so no missed damage there. Zan leaves up two back to Zack. We go. Draws a land. Or does he? Maybe not. He's seeing some pressure here. W giving your opponent one elk is usually fine. Giving your opponent two elks, uh. and then you are at risk of losing your oko. So he's going to go to removal on thin ice. It will be the start. Now, he has to target Giver of Runes. Anything else, and it just gets gains protection. Exactly. So he targets Giver of Runes in response. Zan's going to use the Giver to protect Devoted Druid likely giving it protection from blue. It looks like he does have that windswept teeth you mentioned hiding out in his hand. So teeth theft. So it was the draw of a land for Zach. He's just trying to clean things up. You know, it's possible here he can write he could elk the hierarch and detention sphere both creatures. Mm, I believe their Just, name they, is. Oh, they the keep stain. the name. Okay. But uh he could look at something like making a food and then casting the sword in his hand to set up a situation where Syed might be incentivized to leave back something that can profitably block it. Sure. Doesn't want the food token turning into an elk picking up the sword. Exactly. See, this is where the deck can be so strong. That all of Zach's cards can f are flexible enough to turn into removal in this kind of matchup. Things like Teferi. On Zach's side, Stoneforge Mystic and Birds of Paradise have the follow-up. And this is starting to look like a game that Zach has control of. Yeah, this is starting to get really tough for Syed. Finds Sword of Fire and Ice. Birds of Paradise, quite good at holding a sword. Very capable. That's an old... That that's a combo that's been around for a long time. Oh, yeah. Food token from Oko up to seven. The most loyal of Planeswalkers. And we will see Eladomri's call from Sayed. It's got to get to work here. About next turn, things are going to be out of control. Zan looking through his creatures. Is there anything here that helps? He can remove the Oko, but the difficulty here is what what to do after that. Exactly. You know, Deputy Attention can take care of it, but then there's going to be a sort of fire and ice on one of these creatures, and he's going to just start losing a creature every turn. Right. And any card like that, it feels like you're building a house of cards, because if it gets answered, your card didn't actually do anything. It's all contingent on your cards staying in play. So I like this one thing Zan does is he's going to go for Walking Ballista. That can give him actually some 
some way to keep the sword out of play for at least a turn. Ballista into hand, back to Zam, but he can't fight the fair fight yet. Alan is at 15. Say it finds Giver of Runes. And that even only works if Alan doesn't draw a land. Right. Yeah, otherwise he can just equip a second time. Swing. His elk exalts to four. That goes to Oko, but Oko with seven loyalty, it's possible Zach just lets it go to three. Hand here looks like Birds of Paradise, Detention Sphere, and Sword of Fire and Ice for Zach. Yeah, Planeswalker drops to three loyalty. No problem for him. Walking Ballista on two for Xan. But that's the only play he has. He will pass. And, and it's becoming oh, this pretty... Is interesting. Then go ahead. Right, so now this is the spot where Zach can't really afford to equip the sword to anything unless he elks something. Okay. If he, say, elks his own food, then he can put a sword on it, but he's still going to lose something on the battlefield that way. Still the detention sphere in hand for Zach. See he fetches. He's trying to hold on to that one just as his insurance against anything coming from Zan that he can't otherwise deal with. Right. Anything that powerful or that versatile, you want to try and hold it as your last answer for that reason because you never know what Syed's actually going to draw but you know the detention sphere is going to be able to answer it. Detention sphere of the play. Like here on Zach, using Birds of Paradise just in case it gets shot by bullet Walking Ballista. That shows that he intends to target Walking Ballista, and that is what he does. Like the play from Zach. In this part, it feels like it's almost going to price Anne into removing Stoneforge Mystic. Right. That does not necessarily feel great. Actually, you're going to go a different direction. First, Birds of Paradise. Second, Pete's, the second shot is at Oko. And the thing I like about this is it just shows long-term planning from Syed. Mm -hmm. Here's the bird, Zack. Makes the food token a 3-3. Three, three. I mean, it shows that Zan's trying to make play a fair game long-term, but... It's so hard to remove Oko from the battlefield. Right. He, it definitely is going to put him in an awkward squeeze that he doesn't have anything right now, or at least anything that's going to break through this battlefield. The giver of runes. He's able to stay alive here, but I just... What is... I don't know what the way forward is for Zan. Yeah, he needs to find something to actually deal with this Oko. So if he could find, let's say, that deputy of detention, Alan doesn't have an answer for it, and then something that can answer this sort of fire and ice, then a devoted druid, then... The Vizier, he could go infinite from there, but that's just so far off. Right. I mean, the devoted, the deputy attention, he's been holding on to that to take care of the Sword of Fire and Ice. That makes sense. That has to be where things start, except if he loses his Noble Hierarchy, he doesn't have blue mana. I can't actually cast the deputy. 
So it's going to be Path to Exile on the birds. Okay. And this is just him trying to buy as much time as he can. Try for it. We see Mana Leak. That's not going to work. And Veil of Summer oh. from Xan out of the sideboard. Okay. Okay. Paths the birds. No connect on the sword. Xan will be able to untap and deputy this sword. And I'm starting to see Xan's plan come together. That's if he has the deputy in hand? Yeah, they're, they're still a missing piece. He has to have the deputy. Right. Otherwise, something else picks up the sword and things get tough again. Mm -hmm. But he gets to untap with Giver of Runes as well. They're, there's a lot to like. Yeah, there's actually that whole turn cycle. I mean, I think it shows the strength of Veil vale of Summer, but I mean, it brought Xan back into it. And that's because when you have a card like Veil vale of Summer, that's a one mana hard counter spell that draws a card. That is the kind of big swingy play that can actually change something like this. Right, and Sian's leaned into those sort of conditional situations because he knows he needs those to work out in order to actually hang in these games. Oko turns Giver of Runes into an elk. Changes mind. Oko just going to make a food. He says, go, yeah. And I don't know that Zack has any cards. So empty-handed here. Back to Zan we go now. He's untapping with Giver of Runes. <sighs> Creatures are protected. That's so big here. And it looks like what Zach might be building towards here is trying to actually steal Giver of Runes. Yeah, once he can steal Giver of Runes, he can start forcing a sort of Fire and Ice creature through, and that should be enough. Right, this is just him assuming this is his long game out of here. Yeah, there's plenty of things that Zach can play toward. I mean, in all honesty, there's a lot of things, right? Even if, if he finds his Supreme Verdict, that is probably enough. Right. So we get to see a 4-4 Elk attack in at Oko. Still not enough damage to remove the Planeswalker. So Zach says, yeah, it's a one. That's fine. Three mana. Four mana from Xan. And now we see Shalai. And this one-two punch, very significant. Ooh. Shalai plus Giver of Runes actually locks off most of Zach's interaction. Right. He Spot removal is not going to play here. Yeah, and this is, this is a great punch for Xan. So, to... Giver of Runes can give any other creature protection from the color of your choice. And Shalai, the one of in Zan's deck, it's a combo piece, but it also just protects the rest of the team. Right, and this this might actually be the way Syed wins. Yeah, this is, right now we're just looking at Zach. He's going to need to find, well, his Sword of Feast and Famine or his Supreme Verdict. And not much else works. See, all of Zan's things now have Hexproof. You can't use Oko. You can try to... Elk the Shalai, that's what he'll do. Giver of Rune's going to protect the Shalai. I mean, and Zach, if he has a path to exile, if he draws one of those, okay, back in business. Okay, so how about this? You either have to give it protection from blue or green, and then if Zach has a white removal spell, then you can right. deal with the Shalai here. I think it's actually a little worse what's going on. He's going to give it protection from blue or green, then Zach is going to put the sword on the... Oh, no. If he gives it protection from green, the elk can't swing through. Exactly. I was going to say, if you give it, you attack him with the stone forge with the sword of fire and ice, but no, it's a 3-4. Zan can block. Maybe something like a Teferi Time Raveler can do it here? Yeah, I'm assuming that Zan picked green. Because then, otherwise the elk wins That's it, what makes picks sense. up the sword. Right, right. right. And he did choose green, can, confirmed by our judge here. So now the sword goes on the elk, but the elk is green. This doesn't work. And Zach just has to pass. Oh. Zan, what, what have you done here? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this would be the steal of the tournament. Oh, my gosh. Syed showing why he is the captain yeah, of Team he, Lotus Box. He should not be in this game, but suddenly 
He has. I, I, we he were has trying found to about, together yeah. all the things that needed to happen to make yeah. this come together, and he's done it in a totally different way. Right. There's still a lot of vulnerability, right? So Zactros Supreme Verdict, Zactros Teferi Time Raveler, Zactros Path to Exile, all those still work right now. So he's not out of the woods. He and Zan has to know that this lock he has is Uh-oh. tenuous. But second giver runes now the lock increases. We're getting really close to Supreme Verdict or Bust territory. Right, cracks Horizon Canopy. Shalai swings in. Oko is down. And that shuts off all those other removal spells now that Zach doesn't have a way to proactively do it. Right, because before, the the fact that Oko's on the table meant Zach could plus it on Shalai and a Giverunes had to choose blue or green. Correct. That's not the case anymore. Now right, Path to Exile right. doesn't work. Noble Hierarch from Zan. Going to cast the last card in his hand. And I like how he's not playing around Supreme Verdict here. There's, That's there's not, not how you win. Well, I mean, I guess the Oko is gone, so maybe? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels like the way he wins is actually just getting up to six mana and using this Shalai. Right. He doesn't need to combo. In fact, he probably won't combo this game. No, that's that's not how you win this game anymore. Stoneforge Mystic. No, but wait, from Zach, is there a Batter Skull? Ooh. There is. Germ Token into play. Now, still can't connect because of these Giver of Runes. Well, only one of the Giver of Runes actually plays here. Right. I mean, the big thing for Zan is that whatever the Sword of Fire and Ice is on, that can't get through. Correct. Both creatures swing. And, and it does feel like Zan just takes the batter skull hit then? Probably. I would imagine so. Zan's side. You know, he, he hates to have to tap down again here, but his creatures have hexproof. If he lets this hit happen, he'll lose one of the two giver of runes. And I think what he's well, looking Shalai at doing... is protecting the giver of runes. Yeah, so I think what he's going to do... Oh, you're right. You can't even shoot it. Right. He's just going to chump block with an elk here. Fair enough. Takes four off the batter skull. Right. Zach actually has the stronger board. So Zan can't race here. Zan has to hang out and use Shalai to grow the team. Is this that what is, we're looking at? Yeah, this is... This has gotten complicated. Yeah. He blocks with the elk, and he's actually going to take some shields down. He'll give... The elk protection from green, so it doesn't lose the elk, but it is a four point trade. Zan to 11, Zach to 18. And well, if there's a follow up removal spell, that's really bad for Zan. Yeah, and Zach didn't have the removal spell last turn. Right, it's just playing against the top card of the deck. He puts, sets three mana aside. <laughs> yeah. What is the play? I mean, if it's another Oko, that's huge. Zan, I don't know if he can beat it. He'd lose the Shalai. It's to fairy. Time wrap. Oh my god, and you can bounce your own detention sphere. And that, <laughs> he does it. And then and Zan took the shields down on the Shalai. Oh was it my And it might have been a too aggressive a step from Zan. He saved his elk token and he paid a huge price for it by losing oh. Shalai. Oh now, my god. He'll need a deputy of detention. He needs to get Shalai back. Yes, that needs to come back. Right now. A minute ago. <laughs> but can he do it? If he if he can do that, I think he's okay. He's facing down some serious pressure here. Look for Zan, Zan's side. Devoted Druid. Okay, he does have Devoted Druid with two Giver of Runes. Hold on. If he just has a combo. Vizier, this is infinite mana. He doesn't have anything to do with infinite mana. Oh my gosh. Oh, but he's going to say go. He has the infinite mana combo with double giver runes backup. Spot removal is not how it's happening. Right. So so he survives this turn somehow. Maybe he chumps with an elk. I think he can survive the turn. And then what are the things? Detention sphere or he supreme verdict. Well, well yes, yeah, there's lots of ways that Zack wins. But then Zan needs to top deck. Duskwatch recruiter, walking ballista, Finale deputy of detention. Station, Eladomri's call. Okay, there's a lot. Right. Some of those would lose to Force and Negation. Wait. Walking Ballista and Shalai are gone. And those are the win cons. Now, well, he could draw the whole deck, find, deten- find Deputy of Detention, and get the Shalai. Sure, 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 sure. So sure. that works. Assuming you have enough colored mana. 
4 damage and Xan to 7. We're going to have to count it. Zack up to 22. And this one has remained close throughout. I mean, Xan really pulled... Got into a game that he was so far behind in. And then a slight... I don't even know what's a miscalculation. He let the Shalai right, go. here it is. One draw from Xan. Is it a winner? He has infinite mana. It doesn't feel like it. Xan's the type of player he'd be taking this time no matter what he had. There's so much on the line of this turn. Noble Hierarch. That doesn't do it. Oh. It's a pass. <laughs> I cannot take this. And at this point, I think Xan is in the, in the mode of he's going to start chump blocking. Trying to buy himself one more draw. Right. I mean, he doesn't need most of these creatures, right? Noble Hierarch doesn't matter too much. No, the Elk he, doesn't matter. You're, he is not dealing 21 damage to Zack this game. He is dealing 30 million, or he is dealing zero. Right. Oh, actually, the Ballista's in the graveyard, but he has Eternal Witnesses in his oh, deck. So, so that's right, fine. Right, right, right. Infinite okay, Green okay, does okay. it. Okay. Duskwatch Recruiter does it specifically, or anything that finds Duskwatch Recruiter. Was that an Oko off the top? Swing in by Zach. We will see. Elk in front of the sword. Noble Hierarch chumps the batter skull. He is going to protect his Elk, loses the Hierarch. One Giver of Rune still up. It could be an Oko, but that still doesn't really play here, does it? It can create more attackers. That's true. That's true. It's, Zan is running out of draw life. steps. Yeah, I don't know that Zach can deny Zan this next turn, but between this Oko and now a Teferi on three, I think next turn Zach can do it. Right, because even if something gets protection, that takes a giver of runes down. Right. And that's a, there's just not enough blockers anymore. Exactly. Oko targets the untapped giver of runes. So one giver of runes oh. is down. Yeah, this is... This is Zan's last, I think it's his last draw. All right, Sam, what do you got? Zach, is there, uh, is there anything to be done? Can he, he doesn't want to give this last one. He's going to go ahead and move. The elk dies if he moves the, the sword. The elk dies right? if he moves the sword. It does have three damage on it. Yeah, and Zan points it out. Elk is dead. I think a slight miscalculation there on Zack's side. Not one that I expect to matter here. No, I... I don't think maybe? so. Maybe, maybe. I That's... don't know. That might have given Zan another turn. Hold on. And Zan makes infinite mana. He's moving quickly. Oh, my God. And a white man's El it's Eladomery's call. Oh, my God. Does... And Zack, you see his hand oh. moving slowly. That works. This gets Duskwatch Recruiter. Zan found one of his outs, and he's moving quick. He looks at Deputy of Detention. Is that safe? But Duskwatch Recruiter seems pretty good here, too. It finds everything. Recruiter finds finds Eternal Witness. He's going to go for Deputy. Maybe there's no Recruiters left in the deck. Cast Deputy of Detention. Deputy targets Detention Sphere, which means Shalai comes back. There's infinite green mana. The creatures are all large. Making them all infinitely large. And there's one, two blockers on Zack's side. And I count three, four attackers, five attackers on Zan. And oh Zan said 2-0. A miracle comeback on the draw in his terrible matchup. Finds the win and advances to tomorrow. Unbelievable! That game...